never planned to be a venture capitalist. Um, I think it's a, it's a title that just applies to what I like to do. Um, my history is more on the operating side, so we've scaled two companies um, in my history. One was a family business that my father had founded, and I joined in 2005. We scaled that from 60 mil rev to 600 in three years. We then listed in London as well as the NASDAQ Dubai. And in that time, what struck me most was that we went from six countries to 22 countries. So we became the largest interior contracting company in the world, and we were based in Dubai. Um, and that was a real win for the region. Um, and it was a learning, it was a lesson that you can actually build global companies anywhere. The other company I started was a project of mine, which was the first yoga studio in the Middle East. And that scaled and became one of the largest wellness chains that I ultimately sold to a private equity firm. Um, and both of those learnings was you can actually scale companies anywhere. And the key learning there also was that Dubai is a hub of innovation. Dubai is a hub of entrepreneurship. You can attract the best talents in the world. And, and the time it takes you, know, you to get from the East Coast to the West Coast in the US, we've reached three billion people within a six hour flight. That's half the world's economy. So, that became an interesting learning for me. And in the process, I realized how much harder it was to run a small yoga studio than to run a one billion plus IPO, and became very involved in entrepreneurship and enabling people to start their own companies and angel investing, and ultimately ended up with a portfolio, which as I realized as these companies grew, they needed more funding, um, I came to the realization that a large part of what we accomplished in both entities that I was fortunate enough to be part of the scaling of was due to the private capital that came in. So the first thing that we did when I joined the family business was do a large private placement. The first thing that we did at Zen Yoga was inject some capital to scale to get to 6,000 unique students a month within four years. And so I came to realize that the best strategy and the best talent gets you nowhere if you don't have the right capital and the right capital structures. And so I started working with entrepreneurs on not just advising, but also investing and investing more and more money, and ultimately that becomes venture capital, and I started a venture capital firm um, focused on scaling companies out of Dubai. So companies based in the region that are actually looking at scaling into global markets and building those bridges. Um, some high level data points. We graduate as a region 120,000 engineers a year. We are a population of 400 million people where 50% fall under the age of 30. And you have 40% youth unemployment. So you have a lot of entrepreneurs, is the answer. Um, I think what's interesting is what's developed in Dubai as an innovation hub. So Dubai was a place where the leadership had the vision to attract the Microsofts and Oracles to manage the Gulf out of Dubai 20 odd years ago. And they would send over some salespeople and some account managers. And then people started managing MENA out of Dubai and sent over more. And then that became MIA, EMEA, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, MIASA, Middle East, Africa, South Asia. And your acronyms kept growing. And so when that happened, these offices grew. And now some of these offices literally cover EMEA for tax purposes, MIASA for coverage purposes. Dubai provides first world infrastructure in the middle of this massive emerging market. Um, and that attracts a lot of talent and a lot of entrepreneurs. And as these entrepreneurs are you know, former are the employees of the Oracles, SAPs, Googles, and Facebooks live in Dubai for many years and then graduate out of those large corporates and start their own companies, we find that for them Dubai is home and Dubai has become a hub in that sense. And, we have access to these entrepreneurs. Um, they are looking for capital. There isn't enough capital in the ecosystem. Um, and so more often than not, we see them early on, we see them halfway through, and then hopefully we see them as they exit. So the region is a fragmented market. I think if a company is looking to become you know, the Middle East or a you know, version of something, uh, then that is, a market that's sizable but not massive. Um, I think what's challenging is trying to find those entrepreneurs that are thinking about Singapore and India and not about the direct neighbors and that actually have technologies that are comparable if not better than what's out there globally because now 
the world is your play area, but the world is also your competition. And so we have to find those entrepreneurs that are thinking on a global scale, that have that global expertise, they're building global companies um, out of Dubai rather than ones that are just looking at tackling regional uh, markets. So the venture capital scene in the Middle East and Africa, which is the region we invest out of, um, is very nascent. I would say, I would argue that it's at least 10 years behind China. Um, some people would argue it's 10 years behind India. Um, I argue that we're around the corner from a very large inflection point. And the reason I say that is there's 120 funds. So one of the things that I've done recently is set up the Middle East Venture Capital Association, which didn't exist which again is part of the development of the ecosystem. And we realized that there's 120 funds in the region. I would say there are seven very active ones, um, four of which are based in Dubai. Um, many are raising fund two, some are raising fund ones, but it's very young. So until two weeks ago, the number of investments made across MENA, so now we're talking to Middle East, North Africa, Arabic speaking countries of 400 million people, was 61 transactions, $280 million combined all year. Right. And so that gives you an indication of the level of capital available. Now in the last two weeks, we had one large investment into a region's unicorn, um, and that was a $200 million ticket. But if there's only two very large companies in the region, which are Kareem, which is the region's Uber, um, now valued just north of $2 billion, and Souk, which was acquired by Amazon. Um, and this was Amazon's first acquisition that was geographical expansion, that wasn't a technology acquisition, largely because the market is very complicated. So people who can conquer the market ultimately do get acquired by their global comps. So the region's VC ecosystem is young, it's nascent, there isn't too much capital, um, which is unfortunate for entrepreneurs, fortunate for investors, it keeps our valuations very low, so we invest between one and four times revenue. Um, if you push something up to five times revenue, um, the other VCs get a little bit upset. Um, so that's where we are. We're you know doing a transaction now that's about 1.2 times rev, and the entrepreneur is very pleased. Um, and so the growth potential is massive if you're thinking, let's grow globally. Um, and we come in at very good valuations. We position the company so they are more international. That way we're able also to have valuation arbitrage on the multiple expansion, as well as the actual growth of the companies. Our firm is the only one right now that's led by a woman. Um, there are two others, one invests globally, um, outside the region, not in the region. Um, and the last one also invests in Europe, but happens to be based in the region. Um, and both, I think, have one woman out of several partners. So I'm not sure if they're woman-led or not, but there is not a community of female venture capitalists in the region. And, and the same would be said for private equity. Uh -huh. There are no private equity firms that are female-led. So we're in the middle of changing that. We're rewriting the narrative. This is an important mission, both on the ability to generate returns from an area that people don't think about often, and that's often forgotten, um, as well as rewriting the narrative on the female side.